Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to another video. Now today what I thought I would do would be to talk about Masters of Physiotherapy and essentially what it is like being in a Masters of Physical Therapy or Physiotherapy program. Okay everyone, now before we start today's video, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and it does help me get to my goal of 500 subscribers by the end of this year and it only takes 3 seconds. Um, so today I thought I would discuss what it is like being in a Masters of Physiotherapy program. Now I am from Canada, I am here in Australia studying in a Masters of Physio program. I am someone who has always wanted to be in a physio program. I've always wanted to study in physiotherapy and be a physical therapist, but um, I know for me, kind of throughout my bachelor's degree, um, as well as throughout high school, I kind of was up and down about it. I kind of didn't really know if I had the best grades. I didn't know um, what a master's program in general entailed. I didn't know if I wanted to go back to school because um, was hard enough and enough work as it is in the bachelor's program so I really didn't know what it all entailed and now four months into it I do I think have enough uh, to go on especially being uh, being someone that's in a master's program through this whole uh, pandemic and it being um, a lot more stressful than it normally is I thought it'd be interesting to kind of go into what essentially we do in a master's program what we've been doing this past few I guess months through pandemic um, because I think it's important to kind of mention that because I'm sure a lot of programs not even masters of physio but a lot of programs are probably going to adapt and learn or now know better what they can and can't do online and programs are probably going to look a lot different so just going to kind of get into how we've been doing things and um yeah so if you are like me or like I was and you're currently studying your bachelor's program or maybe you're in high school and you're thinking about wanting to go into physiotherapy then today I thought it would just be cool to kind of talk about what it's like studying in a master's of physio program what kind of things that we do, what placement looks like. Um, I thought it'd be cool to kind of talk about things that I wish I had done throughout my bachelor's, so specifically courses that I wish I took a little bit later so it was a little bit more fresh and things that you kind of need to pay attention to. Um, I know it's a little bit, it can be a little bit nerve-wracking I guess applying for a master's program, especially after figuring out or, or finishing a bachelor's program and then kind of going into something a little bit more intense like a master's program. Um, I know me when I was applying I had no idea what a master's program would look like. I just kind of always knew that I wanted to do physio from when I was younger and when I first got injured. I've, I've been seeing a physio since I was like 10, 11 years old. Um, so physiotherapy was always something that I kind of knew that I wanted to do personally but it was something that throughout my bachelor's I kind of went back and forth into so I kind of I guess fell off the bandwagon a little bit and I kind of gave up I would say um, and I didn't really I didn't really I guess think that I had good enough marks to get into a program so I kind of just pushed that that kind of goal away and I don't even remember what I wanted to do instead but it was something that's always been kind of the back of my mind and I'm super happy that I've applied to all the schools and of course I'm in a program right now so it all worked out but it was a little bit hard throughout bachelor's program um, because you didn't really know or it was a little bit hard I guess to know exactly what was needed um, from a practical standpoint. Now, I personally, I graduated in 2018, so it is now 2020. So the last two years, I 
kind of was studying or I was kind of working sorry um, in the exercise science field so I was a kinesiologist back in Canada um, working in exercise rehabilitation alongside physiotherapists and alongside massage therapists and um, other practitioners like that in a multidisciplinary clinic so for me working clinically and in a private practice was something that I, I was doing and I was kind of getting exposed to physiotherapy through working alongside physiotherapists and for me that was just kind of a little confirmation that yeah this is actually something that I wanted to do. As a kinesiologist we do a lot of the exercise rehab side of stuff, um, side of stuff in physiotherapy so kinesiologists normally work alongside physical therapists or physiotherapists. Um, and a patient may book in for the first 30 minutes with a physio and do treatment or do whatever they do there and then book the next 30 minutes with us kinesiologists and do the exercise rehab portion. So that was kind of my background and that was what kind of led me here. I, I'm from Canada. I am studying in a physio program in Australia. So um, I actually applied to a whole bunch of schools back in Canada and physiotherapy school in Canada is super hard to get into. Um, I know there's pr pretty much only one school in every province, unless you're in Ontario, then there's a whole whack load of schools out there. But for me, I tried every school, didn't get in, and I thought, oh, why not try Australia? I mean, it could be nice, you know, Australia, who wouldn't want to come? Beaches everywhere, and I applied to about I believe five or six schools here and I remember getting my first acceptance letter to one of the schools and panicking a little bit because it was a late acceptance I guess and school was starting in like three months I think it was so I was super panicked because it was my first school and I hadn't heard back from any of the other schools that I'd applied to because um, those start dates weren't until a little bit later so for me, I, I originally, I think I confirmed, but didn't make the payment. Um, and then last minute, I kind of dropped, dropped that uh, seat because I thought, oh, I'll risk it and kind of go into or wait for other schools that I kind of wanted to maybe get into a little bit more than this school. So um, that was kind of my. Uh, I guess my little background of uh, how I how I came here. I ended up coming here to South Australia. Um, I'm studying in a school in South Australia and um, love it here. Um, don't regret any uh, any decision there. But um, so essentially, throughout my bachelor's degree, I kind of did or I kind of aligned a lot of my courses with a lot of the Canadian requirements and what um canada i guess requires is a little bit less than what australia requires so for me i actually when i graduated with my bachelor's degree i actually had to spend about six months upgrading a lot of my courses so if you're deciding to come to here in australia then i'd really recommend you looking into the courses and start applying and start getting assessments of your I guess courses that you have because for me the anatomy and physiology courses for example the physiology part of it was extensive enough but the anatomy was not so I actually had to go and I had to take musculoskeletal anatomy I had to take um, neural anatomy um, I believe the course that I took online was like anatomy for practitioners and it had like neuroanatomy, it had um, what's it called, musculoskeletal anatomy, it had so many parts of it. It was one of the hardest courses that I ever did, but I'm super glad that I did take it because one thing that you need to be super strong in throughout physio school thus far is um, your anatomy. So for me, it's only been four months in physio school and one thing that one thing in physio school that they don't really go over is anatomy and physiology. They expect you to know it, of course. It is a master's program. It is a prerequisite. So you kind of are expected to know it. They, of course, post 
lectures and, and anatomy lectures and stuff that you can revise and you can review on your own. But if you don't really have a strong base and you don't really know your anatomy that well, then it's definitely something that I recommend you review. Um, there are definitely parts of the anatomy like neural anatomy and what nerves innervate each muscle and dermatomes and things like that that I even right now I'm still trying to review each week because it's not as fresh as I thought it would be. Um, so anatomy and physiology is something that I definitely recommend you have and I definitely recommend you kind of really pay attention to while you're in your bachelor's degree and while you're in your schooling because it is uh, super important of course in physio. One thing that um, is a little bit different than a bachelor's is there's a lot more independent study here. So um, there's a lot more I guess opportunity for you to kind of go out and learn on your own. Um, they kind of understand that you're in a master's program, you're postgraduate, you may have a part-time job or maybe living on your own whatnot so you're not in class as much but you still have a lot of work that you have to do so there's a lot of of course pre-lecture and pre-workshop um, kind of material that you have to cover you need to come prepared for class so that you know exactly what you're doing if you're if you're doing massage or a type of massage that day then you need to kind of watch the videos beforehand so you can kind of get right into it they kind of go over each technique um, with you once and that kind of if you're in that that workshop or if you're in that practical for like let's say an hour session then they'll try to explain it as quick as possible so that you can practice as much as possible so a lot of uh, a lot of your learning is going to be through videos and whatnot and then you'll come into your practical workshop for example and then they'll go over it you'll they'll ask for questions and whatnot and then they try to give you as much time to practice as possible because then after that you're really not going to be going over it again so you may have like a revision class or a review class at the end of the semester where you can ask to go over it again but for the remainder of the semester because time is so constricted you're you're going to be moving on so that's when independent study comes and that's when we all have like access to the physio room so we all just kind of form groups and we'll come in and practice of course with uh this whole pandemic things have been a little bit different which i'll go into of course because i think um physio programs everywhere and programs in general everywhere are probably going to look a lot different from now on just because people are just because programs are kind of figuring out what they can and can't do online but yeah essentially you're you're kind of going and you're practicing on your own you're forming groups and you're kind of revising the skills because you kind of have skill checks so this will kind of be different on of course the school that you go to or where you are in the world i know in canada you have to take i think a boarding exam where they essentially go through skill checks through that boarding exam whereas here in Australia once you graduate you're done you don't need to take another test you've taken all of the tests throughout school and you're a registered physiotherapist so um, here in here in Australia sorry um, you essentially go through your practical skills and then maybe at the end of the semester um, one of your tutors will come over and you'll demonstrate the skill and then they'll check it off so that um, they know that you've you've essentially shown them and you passed it. So it's really as simple as that. Um, just making sure that you know the skills and that you're proficient in them. Um, so that's again like one thing that's a little bit different in a bachelor's program. It's not as hands-on, of course. Um, me doing my bachelor's of physical education coaching and kinesiology, I did have courses like exercise prescription where you did have to kind of make workout plans and like demonstrate the workout plans and things like that but it wasn't of course as a physiotherapist you need to know how to massage and test for injuries and diagnose and things like that so it is a lot more hands-on and they do have a lot of uh, hands-on work here which is what I really like and I enjoy um, so that's I guess one thing that was different from my bachelor's degree 
Um, another thing that's different, I guess maybe um, here in Australia, I don't know if they do it, if it's just a master's thing or if it's just this side of the world thing, but lectures and everything are actually recorded. So all lectures here in Australia and every program are recorded and posted online. So you technically, I mean, it's highly recommended that you go to lectures, but they're going to be posted after the lecture or yeah, after the lecture is done online for you to rewatch it and whatnot. And they they definitely understand that you're working and whatnot. So you may not be able to come to a to a two hour lecture or even a one hour lecture every week. Um, so lectures are all recorded, but then for the Masters of Physio, all of our workshops and practical skill um, sessions are all mandatory, of course. Um, so, of course, you can, if you miss one or two and you have a reason, then that's fine. But, <laughs> excuse me, if you miss a bunch, then, then that's a little concerning because that's a whole bunch of skills that you've just missed and that's a whole lot of catch up um, that you have to do. So, I guess that's a good thing to go into is if you really miss even a day here, it does take a long time for you to catch up. So there is a lot of work and a lot of um, material that you kind of have to cover. So it's really important here in your master's to kind of, or even while you're in your bachelor's, to kind of get into a little bit better uh, study habits if you don't have them. I personally came into this master's with not the greatest study habits. Um, I left everything to the last minute when I was in my bachelor's. Um, I kind of worked very well under kind of the whole stress and the pressure of all of it. So um, I kind of in a sense needed to leave everything last minute, but here in the master's program, that is 100% no-go. If I left everything last minute, then I would not pass. Um, yesterday was actually my third and final um, written exam for this semester. And then next week is my practicals. Um, practical exams and practical um, intensive workshops, of course, to catch up on everything that we missed during um, this whole pandemic. So if I had left everything to last minute, I would not have passed everything this past week. And I mean, I haven't gotten any of my results back, but I definitely felt very confident. I would say a good two and a half weeks prior to the exams um, the past few days, I started reviewing and revising everything. and. What you'll find with the master's program is because you have so much pre-lecture and pre-workshop material to cover and to kind of review before you go into those things, once you get into those things or once you get into that workshop, for example, then you kind of learn it a lot easier. Um, so that was one thing that I definitely found um, a lot easier there. Now, some of the the things that you cover in uh, physio school is really everything. So they, you in physio school, you kind of go through the core areas of physio. So you go through musculoskeletal um, anatomy and MSK or musculoskeletal physio. You do cardio physio, um, orthopedics, um, geriatrics, so old age care. Um, you'll do pediatrics, kids. Um, and I think neural physio, which like spinal and brainal, um, and I think that's it. Um, there may be a few that I'm missing, but those are pretty much the areas that you'll be covering, and those are the areas that you'll get um, a placement in. Um, so essentially, it's all planned out. Every school is probably going to be planned out a different way, and it's going to be structured a different way. Um, but essentially, placement I'll go into, placement's kind of, again, you have a placement or one placement in each one of those um, core areas. Um, and you essentially, when you're on placement, um, you're of course working under your um, supervisor and you're essentially there to help. So you're learning, you're using the skills that you've learned in class and you're doing what you can to work of course under the supervision of your supervisor um, you may not be doing everything that a physio does of course um, because you are there to learn of course but um, you are there basically like it's a full-on um, full day I know here it's a full day like 9 to 5 or 8 30 to 4 30 you're there and you're 
in placement. So that was uh, that's one thing about placement that's kind of cool. Okay, sorry, I had to find somewhere to sit. But placement, essentially, um, I'm actually going on my very first placement, um, not this next week, but the upcoming week or that, that next week after that. So in two weeks time, um, which I'm super excited about. Um, I'm prepared for and I'm in, I guess, complex care. So complex fracture and surgery cases. So that's gonna be interesting and that's gonna be kind of cool. I'm just in the hospital. So um, that's essentially though how placement works is you're, you're there, you're helping out, you're one of the team. So you're learning and you're working alongside the team. So um, that's kind of uh, cool there. And at least where I'm going, while you're on placement, you don't really have any coursework. I think that'd be a little cruel. Um, you of course have reflections and things that you have to document and little tasks like that. Um, even when you're at home, the placement supervisor may ask you to review cases or something for the next day or whatnot. So there is things that you may need to revise and review on your own when you're at home. If you're kind of not sure about an area or you've seen something um, through the previous day that you're at placement and you're kind of not sure um, how to go about it, then you may have to go home and study a little bit and research. But for the most part, you're just on placement and you don't really have that much else to do. Um, like I was saying before, it is a full like nine to five type thing. So you're there all day. Um, I assume you're going to be exhausted at the end of it. Um, that's what the second years have told me. So that's, uh, I'm actually excited, excited about that. But I guess what I wanted to go into now is what we have been doing the last couple months, I guess. So online learning actually hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. Um, we still have our lectures online. We don't really use the whole Zoom. We use like the Blackboard, Blackboard sorry, version of Zoom. So um, we've been doing everything online still. We've been having case studies where we go through, um, of course, printed case studies um, and kind of going about how we would diagnose and how we'd go about treatments and all of that. So they've been preparing us for as much as possible because telehealth um, is actually going to be something I think in physiotherapy and all professions probably healthcare professionals it's probably going to be increasingly popular from now on so it was actually kind of cool to to learn all of all of or the way that we did because it kind of uh it kind of i guess goes hand in hand with how telehealth would be and kind of interviewing or having i guess a initial assessment online in a sense maybe um so yeah, we've been just doing a lot of case studies and a lot of uh, covering what we've been normally or what we were meant to cover, but just a lot more, I guess, online type of stuff. I think we started tr we started by trying to do as much practical at home as possible, but it didn't really work out. So um, they adapted, and I'm very fortunate that my program is amazing in the sense that they like take all of our feedback um, into consideration and they adapt things very well so um, it, it's it's actually been a lot easier than I thought and um, it was stressful at the beginning but um, it's been it's been going good and now that things are kind of going back to normal it's it's exciting to see but that's I think really the main points that I kind of wanted to talk about today kind of when you're in your bachelor's or when you're going even if you're just applying and you're deciding that okay maybe I want to start my master's of physio after I've done my bachelor's then definitely what I'd recommend is pay a lot of attention to your anatomy and physiology um, neuroanatomy musculoskeletal anatomy um, all of it it's all going to come into play um, I know when we do cardio I'm sure all of that type of anatomy is gonna gonna come into a play as well so definitely know your anatomy it will save you a lot of time when you're in your master's program because again you have a lot of material to cover a lot of material to learn um, so adding anatomy on top of that because you didn't really pay attention back in bachelor's then that's a little shame and it's just a lot more work on you um, so that's that's really the main thing um, from your bachelor's program that I I'd recommend you focus on yeah um, that is really all I had today um, I hope that covered a lot of your questions I don't know um, if you had those questions or maybe it brought new questions who knows um, yeah thank you all for watching um, and I will talk to you all next week